and this latissimus dorsi is nice and soft at the moment there's no tension there but it is strong and it's nice for any muscle group to have a massage to release spasm the muscles will go into spasm frequently however often they're used or how whatever size they are and that spasm needs to be reminded that it can loosen off and quite often they don't know they can but they have to be reminded to and this is a typical type of muscle area here which does go in spasm the mid back some people complain come into me in the clinic with problems just down here and across here I mean obviously this is the waist area so it could be associated with kidneys but um, more often than not it's from lifting something heavy or bending over without supporting your weight underneath you because this is the part of the back that will support you there and it just simply needs some lavender, Roman chamomile and a nice sensitive soothing massage in that area and it will go at the point where I'm doing the mid-back, there is a lovely technique to do with the latissimus dorsi where you're, it's called ringing, pulling one and pushing the other, like a push me pull you. Nice and slow again, very sensitive massage. And it has the lovely effect of linking the left and right sides of the body because quite often a lot of massage actually works on linear lines where you're working up and down rather than across for good reason but this is one of the treatments that you can do to good effect And then when I'm working on the shoulder blades, the scapula, I like to isolate the scapula and actually not only just work out where it is, but draw a line around it. With pressing fingers, you can see I'm pressing fairly firmly, but not hurting, around the outside of the scapula literally like tracing the edge and when you do that it pushes all of the fluids and toxins that I can feel uh, creating knots in there that sit there very happily not moving for many days months or years creating havoc without you knowing about it until one day when you just feel this enormous either not or even stiffness where the uh, muscle and fascia will not move and the shoulder is either frozen or a cricked neck for instance somewhere in the body where there's so much uh, many years possibly of uh, lack of movement or lack of the correct type of stretching movement to release that tension and the, those crystals. So what I'm going to do now, if it will comply with me, is actually pick up the base of, there's like a V at the bottom of the scapula and move it. Sometimes it won't and I have to just raise the arm to the back and then it's more obviously protruding and you can push and pull much more easily. And by doing this, you're releasing underneath that flat scapula all of those toxins. And that's moving very nicely. And then come round and do the other side. 
again tracing the scapula finding the edge of the bone of a nice warmed shoulder finding that V at the base and I think from memory this is the one that doesn't move but we'll have a little go at it just relax your arm into mine and let it go well done oh it's moving yay beautiful well that hasn't moved for a very long time I know and it's moving today so that's a really good sign lovely so with the back massage you'll have noticed that I've moved around the back somewhat the effleurage is the whole back then I worked on the upper area with the trapezius came down the spine did the lower area around the hips and the sacrum then I came up to the midsection for the latissimus dorsi and the whole spine. And the reason for dotting around the back is to keep it all warm all at the same time. It is important that, for instance, when you're working down on the sacrum, that the shoulders aren't getting cold because it's too long without any treatment. And the same for when you're working on the shoulders. You can use towels to keep an area of body warm if you're not going to be working on it for a while. But I quite like, in a very gentle and sensitive way, to actually move around the back so that it all stays warm. And the back needs to know that it's being looked after and cared for and it doesn't want to feel ignored or left out. And I, I really feel that because some of the back we might actually have muscle memory and be thinking, I haven't been worked on for a while, I need a little bit of attention. And uh, whether you're subconsciously or consciously thinking that, that can actually be um, a thought process. So it's important to make the whole back feel part of the treatment and not ignored. So I'm just going to come back up to the shoulders and I'm going to be doing an overlapping pulling movement. Now, because I haven't been working on the shoulders for a little while, they've started to go tense again. So at first, because I can feel that slight solidity underneath the surface of the skin, I'm going to be doing a very sensitive warming up effleurage motion where I'm pulling and warming the muscles and you'll be able to feel when the muscle just starts to give a little bit. At the moment it's still quite tight. But this area of the shoulder from the shoulder point bone and the base of the neck is a nice fleshy area, just perfect fit for a whole hand, indeed the whole width of the palm to pull up and through and you can see the movement of the muscle there is coming with me and that's good again it's going a little bit rosy so when I'm pulling up through this section here you can see the muscles moving with me that's a good thing you want the muscle to go rosy and warm you want the circulation to be called to the area to help you and I'm just starting to use my fingers as well as the thenar muscle this is the thenar muscle here at the base of the thumb and thenar is very useful in massage and what I'm doing now is just starting to hook so the area is nice and warm the, I can feel the tension is starting to subside and as my palm and thenar comes over I'm just starting to hook and keep it as a hook as you come over 
as so. And the muscle will move away from your fingers and so long as it's not too painful for your person, that's okay. It sort of springs away from them when the hook comes over. This is a beautiful treatment for the neck, releasing any neck tension. I use it when people come to me with cricked necks. Um, very good to use with essential oils like Roman chamomile and lavender. Um, other ones, other essential oils I would use in this area for muscle ache and tension um, are black pepper, rosemary, uh, eucalyptus. Uh, all of these will help bring the circulation up. So now I'm just going to come around and do the other shoulder. So having effleuraged, warmed up the area and then hooked. I'm now I'm going to come over slightly more to the neck. So I'm coming upwards, still with a rounded hand, slightly hooked, but you don't want to be pressing into the side of the neck, you're just lengthening your fingers as you come round the neck. Like so. Now I'm just going to use my knuckles, standing at the head of the couch, knuckles from the top of the trapezius up and round. I will be working on this area again when Bafar turns over, but at the moment with the whole back of the neck exposed, it's really lovely to have this area massaged very gently because of course she is lying on her front. I don't want to be pressing her head more into the face hole of the couch. So I'm just massaging again always upwards like this. You see how I'm using my full arm rather than just my wrists or fingers. Turning the full arm and that helps you with your posture as a, as a therapist. Once I've done that, I'm going to bring my thumbs into the base of the occiput, which is the bone at the base of the back of the scalp. And it doesn't matter that the hairline starts here. In fact, sometimes having a little bit of hair there will help the massage in that it seems to give it more of a stimulating therapeutic feel to the person having the treatment. And then working up and down, again each side of the spine, never on it. And what I'm doing here is holding underneath the trapezius like so and then bringing my thumbs as far as I can reach down the spine, working slowly and firmly up to the occiput. A common mistake that new therapists make is not to encompass the whole of the back. So you can see I'm almost drawing a line around the whole back. So my pressure comes firm as soon as I start on each side of the spine. Flat palms, flat hands, and I encompass the shoulders. Literally my hands are hooked around the shoulders and then more lightly down the sides of the back to meet again at the spine. And this is effleurage. I really like also doing a lot of petrissage, which you'll see in the uh, instruction. Now petrissage is when you're overlapping with either thumbs or fingers over a particular more concentrated part of the body. So for instance this would be petrissage where you're focusing. You may be focusing on a knot 
or just a general muscle in spasm. So that's effleurage and petrissage. There's also a lovely treatment called tapotement. All these words are French so far. So with tapotement, uh, it, in it includes a few varying techniques, but namely where you're tapping the skin, or indeed some people might call tapotement, where you're doing a very light percussion which I will also come to. But my tapotmore uses the fingers. You see how I'm anchored on each thumb over the back. And the reason I would use tapotmore is if the person had any respiratory issue, such as asthma, but even just a simple cold, I would want to use it all over the lungs and then on the upper chest. And it doesn't feel like much to the person on the couch, but actually it's doing a very important job of very lightly stimulating the nerve endings to start working and the lymph and the circulation. Okay, and after tapotmo, I always give a very light effleurage over the surface to calm the, the nerves and the skin surface again. Also, there is a, a movement where you use one knuckle, one thumb, for instance, down each side of the spine, where you're literally giving a little shake. And again, I'm not pressing on the spine at all, I'm just working each side. And this is a vibration massage. And you do have to be sensitive when you're doing this because sometimes if you've been doing a nice relaxing type of massage and then you suddenly go into a movement like this it can make the muscles tense and that's what it's done here I can see they're already feeling a little bit more strong and rounded so I'm just doing it sensitively I'm not hurting or pressing too firmly but I'm still getting the message across to those nerves that's a, a technique used particularly across the shoulders once your person turns over. It's very nice on the trapezius. There's also what I call percussion, which is a much more Swedish type of technique where you're really calling for the circulation to come to the surface and to help with issues like fluid retention and cellulite. So once you've warmed the area up, you would go in with this sort of treatment. And you just want to go to the fleshy areas, or indeed you can do this to the sacrum as well. Particularly nice on that little valley there between the shoulder and the neck. Up and down a few times. And then with percussion, that was called hacking. You can also do one called cupping. And with this, you need to really bend your knees and get down to the level of the couch. Sounds a little bit like horses hooves. It doesn't really matter how it sounds, but it does matter what it does to the body. And you can see, you may see, it's gone quite rosy around this area. That's a good thing. And then you'd also do the other side. So that's more your percussion movements. So you've got your effleurage, your petrissage 
your tapotmo, your vibration, and your percussion. And then another one is where I use my elbows in more of a shiatsu move where I'm doing an effleurage to start off with bringing your forearms into play bring your elbows up each side of the spine and at this point you can press in arms widen and down the shoulders do the same again nice and calm slower the better and actually your forearms are quite sensitive they can feel what's going on underneath you're putting quite a lot of pressure on with your upper body and you can be as slow or as firm as you like here within reason obviously you need to be sensitive to the person's breathing and whether by pressing on their lungs for too long if it was too long you're affecting their breathing so just one more time now that is a lovely place to rest so I've got my elbows in between Bafar's shoulder blades and the short the elbow point is just starting to press you can feel it at the bottom of the shoulders in into the trapezius and I'm moving slightly more down and through lovely again it's gone nice and rosy but hopefully it felt okay. It feel all right, Bafar. She's asleep. <laughs> and up the neck. And then looking soon to finish the back ready to turn over. I'm putting my thumbs down each side of the spine again to clear away. And all the time you're doing a searching treatment, you're looking for any issues even that may not have been there at the start. Because quite often I'll be working on the back and then during a treatment I'll find a knot that wasn't there to start off with because it's come to the surface all the tent that means all the tension around it has started to dissipate revealing the knot you see I'm bringing the shoulders up in a sort of pinching movement but a lovely pinching movement finishing off with an effleurage and just as I did at the start some grounding and connecting. It also tells the person that they're rested and they're going to be ready to turn over shortly. <laughs>